<laughs> hey, hey, it's going to get warm, but I'm going to start my introduction into diving deep into the mysterious Monarch 10 double E wave. I don't know if somebody's coming. No, they went on by. Now, Monarch went out of their way to, uh, I guess they kind of insist upon it, on building the, the best way possible. And they knocked the crap out of all the competition in the 1970s when it was uh, coming in to get a bite out of that government money. But uh, Monarch held on to it with just the sheer audacity of this thing. <laughs> and I'm going to get into it. But uh, it is a precision instrument for the artist. Now, if you want to get out of it the most, that's up to you. The company did the best they could to give you a good machine, but you have to make it work. And uh, there's been a lot of nonsense and static on the internet, and particularly that uh, PM forum. And there's this creepy troll called the Thermite Dog, or whatever the hell he is, that comes on there and uh, starts uh, promoting a stupid idea that will not work, it does not work. Been doing it since 2011. This guy is just relentless. Even got some bonehead to do a video on the thing here on YouTube. And if you watch the machine, it runs like crap. And everybody, you know, anybody with any sense would know that. But what has happened is on that forum, that termite creep, he's a complete fake. And you know, if you're a machinist, you can certainly <laughs> catch a fake machinist. I always say, why, why fake being a machinist, man? Be an astronaut, you know? Try that, you know? Don't, don't be an army ranger or anything. Those guys will find you and beat the hell out of you, probably. But be an astronaut, okay? But maybe it's easier <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, this bonehead, and somehow they changed the flavor of that uh, forum from maintaining your machine to changing it to junk. And uh, I can show you, and I think that's a good uh, spot to start with here, on why these fakes, idiots, short pants creeps on YouTube and everywhere, I don't know where they come from. It seems like they, they like to bash the company, call them a ripoff and all that, and want to change things. But these uh, experts are all in for machine restoration. Except for when it comes to the drive in one of these machines, isn't it? So uh, it's kind of a funny thing. So kind of a, another aspect of it is the bullying over the thing. And uh, that had spread over to YouTube when, uh, when I got on here two, year, uh, two years ago, I put out something like 540 videos, just me turning on the camera, fixing my own junk here. You wouldn't believe how nice my tool and cutter grinder is now talking <laughs> and this other stuff. I thought, it, people are interested, I'm doing this stuff anyway, and I can kind of do this and that and try to make a story. Uh, with a point that's always important with a story. I learned that early in school and just in life. Have a point, all right? So the point of this is, is just to um, put across uh, what I have learned, you know. Not necessarily what everybody should do, but I can put across what I have learned about how to deal with the Monarch 10 double E wave and get how I, I don't know about you, but how I can get the most out of it, okay? And uh, some of the things I'm gonna get into here kind of spans some different industries and uh, it's gonna be a little different than uh, uh, maybe some of the things that uh, you've seen. But I can, uh, this next thing is going to be interesting, but I can actually reference it to the instructions on the machine.
and that's going to be pretty cool. And so we'll get over there and uh, start on that right away. Okay, Chloe hasn't come out and, you know, drug me away yet, but I left some food in there. Yes, we can fix those pesky Monarch DC drive components on the Oxalate, and let's have a look on how to do it. <laughs> Now this goes back a long ways for me because the first pay and work I did, well, it was for a company that belonged to a relative that had a, had a bunch of vehicles and uh, old trucks and all kinds of stuff. And I rebuilt their starters and uh, generators. Uh, you know, alternators were starting to come in, but they still had generators back in the early, early 70s, I think. So I'm going to tell you and show you a few things uh, based on the way things were anyway. So what I got here, this is a tandem armature here out of uh, a motor generator, a uh, Monarch 10 double E wave. Now this thing's in the long base part. Okay, and the one over here doesn't have that. Instead of this, it has the uh, large vacuum tube uh, uh, rectifier setup. So this here is uh, in that motor gen <coughs> generator is uh, the alternating current motor, and I, I've heard it said it's about you know, six and a half to seven horsepower. And this is all in the same housing. And this is like those old bullet welders they used in the ship well, uh, shipyards, those old DC welders. So the AC motor starts this. And this is in waves up to about the mid-50s. Rotates this armature and uh, generates uh, about 200 40 volts uh, direct current to run the spindle motor. So it's kind of not very efficient. I have almost seven horsepower running a three horsepower motor. <clears throat> now that three horsepower motor in those uh, older machines is bigger, bigger, bigger than a 50 horsepower motor. Huge. But that's the nature of this stuff. So anyone thinks that two little plastic boxes you hold in your hand is going to replace this. It's crazy. It can't last. It will not last. It sort of works, but it does not work. You can look at that stupid video of that on YouTube. It's, it's stupid. You can see my comment. I didn't hold back there. I've had enough of this crap that uh, termite jerk pulling this crap, you know. And then even short pants jumps out on the thing. The big machine restorer he is, first thing he does is um, gonna pull um, the, uh, the original works out, do the same damn thing with some nutty professor. I don't know where he's going on that, but uh, I think he's, uh, he might have petered out on this, you know. You know how those people are. Okay, so what we have here is this uh, motor generator. So how do we deal with it? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this um, tailstock up close. And I'll tell you, it's not easy to move. Right about there, lock it down. And let's see where, where we are over here. Oh, grab a handful of chips, huh? Yeah, we're just just snug, not tight. There's kind of a shoulder there too. So we're gonna grab that with the center. Lock this down good. Okay. Lock her up. Okay, now let's see we got that yeah, I had it a little high, I think. Let's see how we're looking. I think I better tighten it again. Yeah. There we go. Got her a little snug there. We'll get over here and give it a good snug. Oh, with one hand. That looks good. 
This check's running consistently within 1,000th, and that's okay here. Now, here it's not. Now, let me get this in neutral. It is in neutral. Okay, so rotating this thing here. This is not how you turn this, okay? What you, the uh, old kits, you can look it up in your how to run away uh, south bend and the old uh, uh, Atlas slave equivalent. It shows the Jacobs kit for, for doing armatures, but you know, automotive armatures. And it's got a Jacobs chuck here with brass jaws. And it runs right here on the bearing surface, okay? You don't use the center. You use the bearing surface because you have to be most accurate with the commutator, see? You can be out a little bit. They use this to make this and that. But all precision is based off this. Since I don't have a device, you can make a device if you're doing a lot of these with a bearing in it that's adjustable and not use the steady rest. But I'm going to use the steady rest here, okay? I'll just start getting it set up here. By the way, the steady rest is uh, genuine uh, Pratt & Whitney. It was the Pratt & Whitney uh, deluxe option for the Axelson. It's more precision and sensitive than the regular Axelson steady rest, which is built for heavy duty. Okay, I'll adjust those out a little bit. So I'm gonna get that steady rest right there on that bearing spot there. That's okay. And you see that bearing spot there? You see that stain? Never take sandpaper, emery cloth, ever, and take that off. Don't worry about it. Take the precision stones or a little uh, uh, piece of uh, white uh, Arkansas stone works real good. Just take a precision stone and just pat it. Get any burrs off that thing. If you emery cloth that surface, you are an idiot. Okay? Don't do it. If you're working here and you do that, you're fired. All right. You don't worry about the stains. You only worry about the burrs, uh, the burrs on a drone. Okay, don't worry about that. See if there's any burrs with a stone, right? On the shoulder, here. So when you put that bearing on, there's no crap, okay? There's no woggle from you sanding it, all right? Quit sanding these. <laughs> it was really expressed to me quite strongly by bearing, uh, by the training I had by Timken Torrington. Never do that, okay? Do exactly what I tell you. Don't worry about the stain. Worry about any burrs that happen when you remove the bearing. Okay, so we're done with that. Now we're going to adjust this. And it doesn't have to be like uh, super precision. We'll just get this in here. Get these um, fingers that I custom made, by the way, out of uh, the finest bearing bronze. <laughs> This, these old ways actually had uh, cast, just plain cast iron here. And this is, you don't want to use rollers. This is a bearing surface. And, and these bronze uh, fingers are bearings. And we're going to oil them and use them. Okay, crank her down. Okay. Now, uh, Pratt and Whitney. <laughs> Design this for the Model C lathe. But knowing crafty <laughs> Millwrights would get a hold of them and modify them to fit their axle sense, 
would use the correct nuts to fit the axles and tailstock crunch. You see that? This is made out of genuine axe loy. It says so in the literature. Okay, so we're back here. <laughs> okay, those says, oh, I gotta get, uh, where is it? I think I can do it with, uh, oh, I think I might be missing a little wrench. But anyway, I'll find it and uh, I'll tighten these here. That's all I got to do is lock those. I don't think this one will do it. It will, but it's, it's too big. Okay, I'll leave this one loose, okay? Okay, now I can um, retract that tailstock center. And this is the bearing surface that the armature is going to be trued on. <laughs> you know, that doesn't leave much room for a cutter, does it? But you know, the KDK tool post is like designed for around the corner. But I'm not going to use a cutter. Now that's going to be the surprise here. Okay, now I'll get back with that part, okay? My goodness, it's getting hot out here, and uh, so um, I think I'm going to knock it off and call this a video. And for a quick recap, um, we're talking about the Monarch 10 E lathe. It's incredible precision and um, power, and um, and over to here, the heart of the power of early machines. The motor generator, and here's uh, the combo uh, armature out of one, the AC part and the DC part. And when it cools down, I'm going to come back and we're going to resurface this. You know, like if it's, uh, this is a dead armature, I'll show you. It burned a hole in it. And I, I covered that with epoxy. I was using this as my rotary face to rotor until it burned up. But uh, it's hard to see because it's been sitting outside. But this had failed before. You can see it on these fins. And all of the wire piled up in the here. <laughs> and I guess that was kind of a common failure. Now this failure here where a burnout happened before uh, I got it. This was uh, in... In the machine that I got from Hanford, an old uh, 51 uh, motor generator uh, manufacturing line. I don't know if it burnt. No, that's, uh, these are kind of like that. But let's say, you know, you got some damage like that on, on this. See? And, and of course you have to uh, turn it, right? You have that kind of gel damage. So I'll be back and we will uh, address this damage. Okay. I don't know how, oh, he flew off. <laughs> yeah, Chloe's over there. We got all these dragonflies here. Take a little break here. Okay, over at the duck pond. What are you doing there? Are you hungry? You want to go home, get something to eat? Or you want to chase some squirrels? Oh, she's going to think about it a little bit. <laughs> 